Creo Parametric 9.0 introduced a bunch of enhancements for the design tree. And I think if organizations and people are smart, they're going to want to incorporate these in order to improve the way that they document their design intent. Let's jump back. In Creo Parametric 8.0, if you took a look at the model tree, there's now a design items folder. If I expand that, you can see that it contains the different materials, quilts, bodies, and annotations that are in my part model. And in Creo Parametric 8.0, you could open up a design tree. It was a little hidden, but now in Creo Parametric 9.0, as I showed in my model tree video, it is a lot more easily accessible. You can click on the icon for the design tree. And now you can see it over here. We also have a bunch more icons up at the top. For example, you have a collapse all and an expand all. Let me click on expand all. And like it sounds, it's going to expand all the different design items. So you can see my materials. And here you can see the different quilts. And in the quilts underneath each of them, you will see the different features that contribute to the construction of that quilt. So it gives you an understanding of the hierarchy of the model. Then we have our bodies down here. You can see that we have our materials and their contributing features, and then the annotations down at the bottom. Let me collapse a few of these different ones to get back to where we were before. A new addition in Creo 9 is an icon up here at the top for creating a custom group. And I admit in Creo 8, I used to fumble all the time trying to remember where I could create a custom group from. After I create the group, I can right mouse click on it and choose rename. I'm gonna call this one my critical datums to show you another big change in Creo 9.0. In Creo 8, you could create these different groups you could reorganize the quilts and bodies into it. Now you can put features into these different groups. So for example, I know that there is a really important datum plane. It is right over here. I'm just going to grab it and then drag it. And now it appears in my custom group. Let me create a, another custom group and I'm going to rename this. And this one will be for my data sharing features. And I'm just going to grab a few of them. I'm going to use the shift key to grab a bunch of different features. And by the way, since some of these are quilts, it automatically expanded the quilts folder in the design tree and highlights them so I can see where they are. But I just want to grab these and drag them into the data sharing folder so you can see them located in there. Let me collapse my quilts once more. And so there I grabbed some different features. Be aware that there are ways of using the control and shift keys to grab different entities. If you grab a feature and hold down the control key, it's just going to grab the quilts and bodies related to that feature, but not the feature. Let me try to get it. Sometimes I have issues with this. So I just created a, another custom group. Here I have a feature. I'm going to hold down the control key and grab this one and then let's try that again. Control and then grab it and drag it in here. There you see I got the quilt that is associated with that particular feature. Let me create another group here. And the other combination of keys is the control and the shift key, which will grab the feature plus any quilts and the bodies associated with them. So for example, let me see, I have this feature here, the thickened feature. Let me try control and shift and see if it'll work. Grab that one and move it in there. Ah, only got the feature that time, but maybe I grabbed one that didn't have the right things associated with it. So anyhow, I created a couple other groups in there. And let me create a, another group to show you sort of how you can use this to document your design intent. I actually don't really want these groups here. Let me right click on them and delete them. And for this group, let me rename it. Maybe I want to create one that is associated with the top body. Oh yeah, by the way, another thing is that they eased up a bunch of the restrictions on names of these groups. You can actually have two groups of the same name and you can also have groups that are the same name as a body or a quilt. 
And so, for example, for the top body here, hey, let me grab this particular body and then drag it inside of the group. And let me find a quilt that I want associated with it. Here we have the shaver top. I'm just going to collapse them just so I can make it easier to drag some stuff in here. So there it is. I'm going to grab this and drag it and right into my group. And so that way I have the quilts and the body associated with this particular group. And I could grab related features to it as well. So again, here you can see how it's a way of documenting your design intent. Also, there is a bunch of right mouse button functionality here. So for example, if I left click on the name of a group, Here's an icon where you can create a custom group inside of the group. And also you can set this as the default custom group so that new entities end up in the default custom group. But if I right mouse click, I can select all the contained items. So that way I've grabbed them and then I can say, hey, let's hide all of these different entities. So you see more of the geometry and the bodies that are associated with this particular part as opposed to some of the reference geometry associated with it. And you can see that also from here, you can select all contained items, select all contained features. Uh, so that's some of the buttons that you have in here. Also, if I go to one of the features that are in there and then right click on it, you can see from the right mouse button menu we have remove from custom group. So there's again just a lot of different functionality in here, but I want to make the point that the use of all these different groups are a way of documenting your design intent. So you have the model tree, which is the list of your features in the order in which they're regenerated. But especially now when you have parts with multiple bodies and especially with multiple quilts, it can be confusing to understand how this model was created. But now you can use the design tree in order to create these custom groups and then organize related stuff together so you can understand the construction of your different part models. I strongly encourage that you and your companies start adapting your processes to take advantage of this. And very last thing that I want to mention in this video is that in the group of icons that you have at the top for the design tree, this one over here is to open up another tree that you have called the quilt body evolution tree. And here you can see the objects. I have a bunch of quilts inside of here and the bodies down over here. And I'll cover the quilt body evolution tree in a, another video. But again, here's the design tree. Bunch of big enhancements in Creo 9.0. I strongly recommend that you start playing around and using this.